Welcome to this presentation of our work, Tensor Networks for Medical Image Classification. Uh, my name is Raghav. Uh, this is joint work carried out with Eric P. Brown. The code for our work is available at this link, which is also pointed out in the paper. Here's a broad overview of today's presentation. I will first start with a quick motivation and then present some essential background uh, before I present our model, locally orderless tensor networks. Uh, we present some experiments, then conclude with some of our key observations. So the fundamental question we are answering in this work is uh, how far can we push linear decision boundaries? For instance, a data set like this in R2 uh, which does not um, seem like linearly separable, can become linearly separable when lifted into a, a higher dimensional space, here just R3. Now, this is not something new. This is the fundamental thesis behind kernel-based methods such as SVMs, which operate on uh, this particular uh, trick, using the kernel trick, for instance, where you lift the data into a high dimensional feature space and then work out a linear decision boundary. Neural nets, on the other hand, uh, try, strive to obtain nonlinear decision boundaries in lower dimensional spaces, and that is why their nonlinearities are so important. Tensor networks provide another paradigm to solve this particular task by using linear decision boundaries in exponentially high dimensional spaces, and we will see how in the rest of this talk. Before that, a quick introduction to tensor notation. Now, tensor notation is a graphical way of representing uh, high order tensors and then operations on them. For instance, here, an order zero tensor, a scalar, is denoted by this node, and there are no edges, and edges basically denote the order of these tensors. A vector, which is an order one tensor, has one edge, a matrix is order two and two, et cetera. Um, here, we depict matrix operation shown in tensor notation. So if you have two order two tensors, X and Y, the matrix product of those resulting in another tensor of order two Z, then J is this uh, index which is subsumed by matrix multiplication. In tensor jargon, it is called as the tensor contraction. So the index on which the summation happens. So let's get to uh, discussing the linear model in high dimensional spaces. And to be able to do this, we want to first lift the data into a high dimensional feature map. How is this done with tensor networks? So consider an image um, with n pixels, uh, which is flattened as a vector. So notice not in 2D, but then a two dimensional image or a multi-channel image is flattened into a vector x. Um, and uh, the values are normalized to be between zero and one. Um, then a local feature map operation is conducted on each of the individual pixels and then a tensor product of those local feature maps results as a joint feature map which is in a high dimensional space. Now what are these local feature maps uh, inspired and also continuing the tradition of physics applications with tensor networks, they are sinusoidal. Um, but here what we basically do is take individual pixels, apply this local feature map and then conduct, uh, perform tensor outer product to obtain a joint feature map now, which is an order n tensor. So what does this do to the image? Then the image can be treated, uh, perceived as a vector in the d to the power n dimensional space. Now, what about the decision rule? This is something classical. So if we have a multi-class classification problem, then we have the argmax or the softmax uh, rule to uh, decide which class the particular uh, sample belongs to and the individual samples itself here if we want to uh, apply a linear decision rule then we uh, perform the dot product of the joint feature map with the weight matrix w now it is interesting to think about what this w is uh, before that let's look at this in tensor notation now in tensor notation, our local feature maps are denoted as these gray indices here, gray nodes, and then the weight matrix, which is an order n plus one tensor, has n edges here alongside the n pixels, and then one other index for the output. Thus, we have like um, our weight matrix, which is an order n plus one tensor, and then our joint feature max, which is uh, an order n tensor. Now, if you come to think of how many tunable weights this parameter W has, it's exponential again with N. Now, this is a 
really humongous number now even for a reasonably sized image like 100 by 100 and with a local feature map resulting with v equal to 2 we end up with really massive number of parameters now how do we deal with this is where tensor networks come in now in this work we are going to use the matrix product state tensor network which basically allows us to factorize any order n tensor into a chain of order three tensors with reasonable uh, degree of uh, approximation. Now, how is this done? So the order n plus one tensor can be rewritten as a chain as we see here. And the virtual index here, which is where the uh, approximation is done, uh, is the controlling factor. If we were to have um, the beta to be uh, a certain uh, 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 specific value, this approximation can be exact. But what we end up doing is like choose really low values for beta resulting in um, good approximations, but not exact. Um, how is the contraction itself is done? For instance, if we are interested in computing this dot product of really um, uh, the high dimensional tensors n plus one here and then order n tensor here. Now this dot product can be performed in using an NPS by using contractions shown like this. In the first step, the contraction is done along the dimension D and resulting in what we see here. And then we start contracting along the dimension for beta. And this is uh, done successively until we are left with a tensor of, uh, with index N here, which is our output um, uh, you know, decisions for every class. Now, this basic approximation here reduces the complexity of computing this dot product from being exponential in n to being linear in n, which is a really massive improvement. Now, this brings us to our contribution uh, in this work, the locally orderless tensor networks. Now, what is the primary motivation for this particular work? So existing MPS-based uh, applications are possible only on one dimensional input. And to be able to do this, even when applied to two dimensional images, the images are flattened to be one dimensional. And uh, this can be detrimental because of the loss of spatial structure. And this is more so when using medical imaging, uh, medical images. Now, keeping this in mind, we propose to, instead of flattening the entire image into one long vector, to perform local operations because we treat locally um, uh, small regions to be locally orderless and we aggregate these small local operations at different scales uh, to result uh, resulting in our model now this is also inspired from classical image analysis uh, techniques such as locally orderlessness and then hierarchical treatment of images so consider an image which is uh, four by four as shown here, and then we want to perform NPS uh, contractions on this. But before we do that, we don't want to flatten all of this image into a single one new vector. So we perform what we call the squeeze operation. So the squeeze operation basically takes the spatial information and stacks it along the feature dimension. That's all it does. And once we have this, so each of these small patches have their uh, feature information along um, the, uh, the spatial information along the feature dimension and this entire patch is now reduced to a vector of uh, dimension four but with feature dimension also four. Now this is then input to an NPS block resulting in an output vector of dimension nu which we will see what happens next. So this is our final model where each of the patches are squeezed and pushed through an NPS block resulting in a vector of dimension nu. These are again rearranged and then we can treat this as a, an image at a higher resolution because we lose uh, the resolution going through these hierarchical operations. So meaning we are looking at the image at different resolutions. Now this operation of squeezing and contracting is continued until we have the final NPS operation which outputs our M class um, labels. Now this model is, our, um, is the locally orderless tensor network which is hierarchical and has only linear components except until the final layer where we use a softmax. And this model is end-to-end -end trainable using backpropagation and is implemented available in PyTorch. 
Now, what about the experiments? How do we fare? Now, we uh, evaluate this model on two classification tasks, one on the PCAM or the patch cam chameleon data set, uh, which is a binary classification task uh, uh, for the detection of uh, presence of tumor. Uh, in images, the image patches are 96 by 96, and then there are 220,000 patches for training and validation, and then independent test set of uh, 57.5,000. And the second data set we choose is the LIDC data set, which is um, actually a segmentation data set, which we convert into a binary classification task. Here, the images are 128 by 128, and then there are 15,000 patches, which we split into training, test, and validation. We compare our model, low tenet, with relevant baselines, one of which is the uh, state of the art for the patch chameleon data set, which is the rotation equivariant convolutional neural net. And then we also take up the classical dense net, which is also a CNN based uh, network. And we also use a tensor net, which does not perform the locally orderless um, uh, contractions. Instead, it takes the entire image and then flattens it. So what happens to the decision, uh, uh, the accuracy here? So we report the area under the rock curve here and the state of the art method is 0 0.96 and our model is comparable. Now, the most interesting thing is that we see that by going from this um, flattening the entire image into 1D vector to doing our hierarchical operations, we gain quite a bit. But the most interesting uh, observation is that we are able to achieve this accuracy with less than 10% of the GPU memory utilized for the CNN based methods. Now, this is simply because the low tenet is a model which uses only contractions, successive contractions between operations. There are no intermediate feature maps. So this gives a big upper hand for the model in terms of how much resource is used. What about the LIDC data set? Here again, we observe similar results. Um, we compared with DenseNet and then two other variants of TensorNet uh, X, which we call. Um, and the, we, we perform not only better in AUC, but again, the uh, GPU utilization, the memory used is marginal when compared to the other models. So in conclusion, uh, we presented a fully uh, linear decision boundary of uh, data that was lifted into exponentially high dimensional space. And the model has a single hyperparameter beta, which controls the quality of MPS approximations, um, the squeeze operations, which we used, and then the hierarchical aggregation helps retain structure instead of flattening all of it in one go. Um, we've shown that low uh, tenet uh, performs competitively when compared to state-of-the-art methods, but the big advantage is with a massive reduction in GPU utilization. Now, the model, we've seen that it has a tendency to overfit. It's because each patch gets its own MPS block, meaning dedicated weights, and there are not, they're not weight shared as you would do in a CNN. Uh, but we've seen that with a bit of data augmentation, this can be alleviated. Uh, the model itself uh, implementation is not, implement, uh, is not optimized for efficiency as it's implemented in PyTorch, which is specifically designed for uh, deep neural networks or uh, such models. So there's more to gain uh, in, in having faster implementations of MPS contractions, for instance. So in summary, uh, a model such as this is um, uh, like uh, the low tenet um, is a novel contribution for uh, the task of medical image classification. Uh, it's a different paradigm when compared to uh, existing state of the art models which either use CNNs or uh, feed forward neural networks. Um, we've shown that we can achieve comparable performances with very limited resource and this can be a big advantage for medical image analysis because we are usually trying to uh, fit uh, larger images to have larger batch sizes and then sometimes it's the GPU memory that is a big hurdle. So uh, big thanks and a shout out to Jacob Miller for his uh, Torch MPS which is uh, a PyTorch implementation of the MPS contractions. The model and the data reported in this work are available on this link. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by in the virtual poster session or shoot a mail to me at this particular address. Thank you.